This is our third video for Unit 2 and it's on acceleration. Here's what I want you to be able to do when you're done watching this video. I want you to be able to say, I can use the formula for acceleration to calculate acceleration, change in velocity, or time. I'll do some example problems to help you with that. I also want you to be able to list two ways in which an object can change its acceleration. And we learned these before as ways that an object can change its velocity. Let's get started. This video is going to go pretty quick, so be sure to take notes that you can use for the quiz at the end. Let's start with the definition and the formula and units for acceleration. So acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. And we said before velocity was the rate at which displacement changes, and speed was the rate at which distance changes. So acceleration is definitely related to velocity and speed. The abbreviation for acceleration is just a little a, like that, and the units are going to be meters per second per second, or meters per second squared, which should be written like this. Now let's get into the formula. Anything that has a definition of rate is going to have time at the bottom. And we said it's the rate at which velocity changes. So acceleration equals the change in velocity divided by the change in time. And how we'd represent that in symbols is we'd use our A for acceleration. And change in velocity, we could just write V. But to express change, we're going to use this Greek symbol called a delta that looks like a triangle. So you'd write the change in velocity over the change in time. So you're probably going to see that triangle a lot in your math class, and you're definitely going to see it between now and the end of the semester here. So this triangle, again, is called a delta, and that's a Greek letter, and delta means change. So the formula for acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. And that's written right here. And we could write that a different way. Change in velocity, well, we take our final velocity, Vf, minus our initial velocity, Vi, and divide it by the final time minus the initial time. Probably you'll just be given a time, and you won't have to do final minus initial. But for velocity, you'll be given problems where you'll have to know final and initial. Now, if you go back and look at the units for acceleration, they kind of make sense. If you look at the units for velocity, hopefully you remember that it's like meters per second. And if you divide it by time, which is seconds, those seconds can't cancel out. And what you'll end up with is meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. I think you'll get used to it as you use it more and more. What I want you to know right now is what this triangle means, what is the units for acceleration, and what's the formula for acceleration. Those should be in your notes. A couple of things you might see as we work through problems or as you explore this a little bit more on your own. So acceleration can be positive or negative, and it's because velocity can be positive or negative. Hopefully you'll remember when we used our number line and our guy Abe that had brick walls on both sides for our computer lab. If you move to the left, that was negative. And if you move to the right, that was positive. So that's how you'd get, um, that's how you'd get a sign on velocity and acceleration. Now one thing that you'll see, and we won't get too complex with this in our class, if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, that means velocity and acceleration are going the same way, and an object is speeding up. It's increasing its velocity. If they have opposite signs, the acceleration and velocity, that means an object is slowing down. Now remember our bullet points at the beginning. I wanted you to be able to say how an object can change in acceleration. And that can happen in two ways. An object can change its speed, and an object can change its direction. 
this would cause an acceleration to go so maybe plus to minus, and a speed would just increase or decrease the number for acceleration. Now what I want to do is just do some practice problems with you. So, I think all of the hard stuff is passed, and now let's put it to use. So here's a problem. Calculate the acceleration of a car that goes from 20 meters per second to 40 meters per second over 25 seconds. So it's asking us for the acceleration. It's giving us an initial velocity and a final velocity, and it's giving us a time. So we would use our formula for acceleration like that, and we can just plug in the numbers. The final velocity is 40. Now, what I'm going to do, so I don't have to put these units in there, is right away, I'm going to put my units up here, which is going to be meters per second squared, and I'm going to put it way over here so I don't forget. Now, I'm going to drop the units from here. So the final velocity is 40, that's where it ends up at and it starts with a velocity of 20 and that's going to take 25 seconds. So what we have now after we simplify this is 20 over 25 and that equals 0 0.8. I want to make sure to put that with the units so I'm going to put it over here. 0 0.8 meters per second squared. So this is a pretty straightforward and easy acceleration problem. Let's look at one that's a little bit tougher. This one says, calculate the final velocity of a car that starts at 50 meters per second and accelerates at a rate of 2 meters per second squared for 6 seconds. What's it asking us to find? Well, if we look at the question again, it's asking us to find final velocity. Now that's going to be in meters per second. I'm going to put that at the bottom too starts at 50 meters per second, so that's going to be our initial velocity, and the acceleration is 2 meters per second squared, and the time is 6 seconds. So now that we have all of those things identified, let's look at our formula. A equals VF minus VI over T, and let's plug in what's given to us. Since I wrote the units at the end, I'm going to drop the units for now. 2 equals VF, because I don't know what that is, minus 50 over 6. And now it's just a matter of algebra. Multiply both sides by 6 to cancel that 6 out. And now I get 12 equals VF minus 50. And now I add 50 to both sides. And what I get is 62 meters per second equals the final velocity. Now does that make sense? Well, the car is accelerating at 2 meters per second squared for 6 seconds, so that means it's getting faster. And my answer, 62 meters per second for final velocity, is bigger than the initial velocity, so it makes sense. The next two slides, I'm going to do problems that were similar to the last two slides. If you feel really comfortable with this, you can stop the video now and you won't miss anything for the quiz. If you want to see some more examples, continue on the video. Let's try this one. You exit the highway going 70 kilometers per hour, but need to reduce your speed to 35 kilometers per hour by the time you reach the end of the ramp. If it takes you five seconds to reduce your speed, what is your acceleration? All right, let's see. It's asking for acceleration it's giving you this initial velocity and this final velocity and time of 5 seconds. Now this one, I gave you this example and I think this is the only one you'll see of this with weird units. So the units I'm going to put at the end, it's kilometers per hour but then we're dividing it by second. So this is kilometers per hour per second. I took all of those difficult units out of the problem set, so you won't have to worry about it except for here. Let's use our formula. Acceleration equals velocity final minus the initial velocity 
divided by time. We don't know the acceleration. We know that the final velocity is 35, and the initial velocity is 70, and our time is 5. So this one, if we simplify the numbers, we've got negative 35 on top, divided by 5, and that's going to give us an acceleration of negative 7 kilometers per hour per second. Let's try one more. A ball starts at rest and rolls down a hill. It accelerates at 5 meters per second per second. What is its speed after 4 seconds of acceleration? Alright, so it's asking for a speed, which is the same as velocity, and that's going to be a final velocity. Time is 4 seconds, and its acceleration is right there. So we don't know this but we know that it's going to be meters per second, so I'm going to write that down here, and let's use our formula. Acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Acceleration was given to us as 5. Final velocity, we don't know. Time is 4 seconds. Now, what's initial velocity? I didn't mark it on here, but if you read the problem again, it says the ball starts at rest. So even though it didn't give us a number, it's implied that the initial velocity is zero meters per second. So we can write that in. All right, if we simplify this, we have five equals the final velocity over four. We'd have to multiply both sides by four to cancel out that four. And then what we get is our final velocity equals 20. So 20 meters per second. And that makes sense because it starts at rest and it's going to be accelerating, getting faster to 20 meters per second. Now what I want you to do is take the video quiz and work on your problem set. Be sure to ask questions and check the answer key so that you get this down. The next things that we learn are going to be building off of this.